This is Ilze B. Today I am going to talk about the equivalent, Latvian equivalent of the word to put. And this discussion started in a small group that, um, that I have. I have a small group of learners of Latvian. And we had this discussion this week. And I thought that uh, this is uh, very uh, useful. This would be very useful for other people as well. So I'm going to talk about put. The, uh, the Latvian uh, word for, uh, for put is licked. And uh, why this is confusing is often why people, when, when they look up the word in the dictionary, but still cannot figure out how to use it, is because Latvian uh, English speakers think the way English speakers do, and Latvians uh, who teach Latvian to English speakers think like Latvians, and there often is a disconnect. First of all, if you were to look the word put, the English word put in the dic uh, put uh, if you were to look it up in a dictionary in an English dictionary you would see a long long list of uh, of word combinations with put and when you are thinking in English how to use the word put you often disregard the uh, another word that goes together with put so uh, you expect uh, to use it the same way in Latvian. It doesn't work that way in Latvian. So let's say, for uh, for instance, in English, you would uh, use uh, word combinations to put up, to put down, and to put down, for instance, may, uh, may mean to kill, like an uh, animal, right? Or uh, to euthanize, right? And to put up or to put up with is to... to um, for instance, you don't like something, but you tolerate it. So it would be tolerate. So you see, there is a totally different meaning. And similarly, uh, in Latvian, we also have uh, little changes to the word uh, that translates as put in English. By the way, the word, like I, uh, I didn't give you the word, the infinitive form of the word to put is um, to put is linked. Okay, this is this is the word's infinitive form. Uh, so, licked. When we think about uh, just to translate this word is licked. However, in Latvian, we often use prefixes for words, and prefixes of words uh, prefixes are the confusing part. Often, the confusing part why people don't understand licked. But not only. There is another thing. Uh, this is a very short word, one syllable word, and one syllable words are the so-called first conjugation uh, words. And uh, what, what that means, so that I don't uh, need to go uh, too much into uh, theoretical detail, it means that it simply changes uh, forms very much so that you can often, you, you often uh, cannot even recognize it. Like, for instance, if I want to say, for instance, if I want to say, I put uh, it doesn't look like this. This word uh, immediately changes. So I put in Latin would be es lieku. See how this word has changed. Licked is to put. I put is es lieku. So uh, uh, one more form, like for instance, you put. You put immediately looks different too. Tu. Leads. See how it changes? Yeah, and, and that is confusing, right? There is one more thing. Two leads, if you don't know the context, uh, can also mean a different word. It can mean you bend. And the infinitive form of the word bend, uh, to bend, I don't know if you see bend. The infinitive uh, form of the word to bend is liekt. See, it's a different word, liekt and liekt. But this form with the word to is exactly the same, to liet. So for you to understand it, you just need to know the context, right?
But now let's go to the let's go to the prefixes that I started talking about, so that we can discuss uh, the, how prefixes of the word licked changes can change the meaning or add uh, clarification for the word. So I'm going to erase this. If you want to watch it later, you can watch it later. So that we have space. I will go through all the prefixes that we have in Latvian, and uh, all the prefixes can be used with the word licked, which translates as to put in English. So I'm going to go down uh, in an alphabetical order. So the first prefix is eyes. So eyes licked, eyes licked, the prefix eyes means behind so if you if you are using the word eyes licked it typically uh, means to put behind something behind something else the example that i gave uh, to my students was put uh, the book behind the glass on the shelf like for instance you have a wall unit and you have shelves shelving and then there's glass in in front of it so you can say eyes stikla eyes lets eyes stikla and we would in latin in a latvian sentence we would even use that preposition again so it would look eyes lets eyes stikla So, eyes, let's eyes, stickla. Uh, so, we have prefix eyes and we also have a preposition eyes. So, put it behind. It's kind of like you have the, the word behind twice as a prefix and as a preposition here. So, eyes, let's eyes, stickla. But there is uh, there's another meaning of this word eyes licked when it's used in a phrase. For instance, you can say eyes lets labu vardu par mani. Eyes lets labu vardu par mani means put a good word in for me, which means like if I want to go to talk with somebody, like some authority, and somebody else knows that person. I can talk to that person, my friend, and say, Aizliets labu vardu par mani, which means that uh, prepare that conversation so that when I go and talk to that person, then they already know it and they uh, already have some good thoughts about me and then uh, we, uh, I could uh, connect with that person uh, e more easily, so so to say. So, Aizliets labu vardu par mani, I'm going to write it here so that you have it. So, Aizliets labu vardu par mani. So, as let's labu vard par mani, put a good word in for me. I think there's a, such a phrase in English as well. As well. So, yeah, there you have it. Um, okay, the next prefix in the alphabetical word, uh, order is uplicked. 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 So, so, the prefix up. The prefix up typically um, means around, up. We also have a word, upcart, around, around, upcart. But we also have a preposition simply up like this. So when we, when we say uplicked, we would uh, really, what we would mean is to put around, like for instance, put a scarf around my shoulders. That could be uh, a sentence, and now I'll say it in Latvian. Apliets shalli man ap platsiem. And you will see that again, we have the preposition that we add to the word. And again, we use even another prep, uh, not preposition, pre prefix, and we will use also the preposition in the same sentence. So you will see it twice. So uh, the sentence will look like this. Apliets man ap pleciem shalli. 
Okay, so put the scarf around my shoulders. So applique. Okay, this is the direct meaning. Again, there are phrases that are used with this word applique. For instance, applique are nodokliem, and that means to tax. So, yeah, just like in English. We have phrases that also have a, diff a little different meaning. So I will uh, write down the phrase applique. Okay, so the word is applique, and then we have ar nodokliem. So nodokli is taxes, and uh, literally it would be uh, put taxes on, on something. So to tax, applikt ar nodokliem. That is a phrase that we use in Latvian. Okay. So then uh, the next prefix that we can have with the word licked is, I will only uh, change one letter here, and that is at licked. Atlikt. So, uh, atlikt is uh, at the prefix at often is um, uh, used when we uh, want to reverse something. We would say back, at griesties, come back, for instance. And atlikt therefore means to put it back, put something back from where you took it, for instance. Yeah. So, uh, to put back would be at liets at or if I'm giving an order, say put it back. It would be at liets at pakal. At liets at pakal. Okay, like that. And you see back also has a prefix at at liets at pakal. However, again, this word at liet also can be used uh, differently and that would mean postpone, atlikt, atlikt. Uh, if we wanted to say uh, let's uh, postpone our meeting, uh, then it would be atliksim mosu tikšanos. In fact, we don't even need to use the word mosu, um, which is our, in Latin we would uh, simply say atliksim tikšanos. Atliksim tikšanos. Okay, so, uh, okay, so this is postpone. All right, we are, uh, we have gone through all the prefixes that starts with a or in English, you would say a, and we are going to now go to uh, two prefixes that starts with e, or English uh, speakers would say i. So the next prefix is ear. And uh, this is quite straightforward because ia usually means uh, inside. So we put something inside of something else. So elict would mean put inside. And that's very straightforward, right? Um, uh, uh, when I think about phrases uh, in uh, that would not be so straightforward, uh, I would um, immediately think about a school when we uh, grade students, as teachers to grade students, and then they could say, uh, for instance, uh, grade well or give a good good grade or give give a good mark. So that would be ielikt labu adzimi. Ielikt labu ielikt labu adzimi. So yeah, that that can also be a meaning of ielikt. All right. Now uh, a different. Uh, prefix. The second that starts with I is 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 licked. So is licked is uh, typically is the opposite of ear. Is is to take out something to remove. So is licked uh, would 
uh, if you think just uh, about is, is to take out. However, this is interesting um, because uh, to put inside, um, to put generally the opposite of to put would be to take, right? And to take out would be a diff uh, different word. It wouldn't be put, it would be take. Therefore, this word specifically is not used uh, in the meaning of take out. It has a more narrow uh, use and it would be, for instance, if we say to, out, uh, to put out for display, to display so that uh, others can see or to put out of the house, like for instance, uh, to put out in the sun. Uh, uh, for uh, if if we have uh, house plants, for instance, and we want to take uh, put them out in the sun for summertime, that could be also the meaning. And the third meaning is islik no maya. That would be to kick somebody out out from uh, their house because they probably are not paying rent. So islik no maya. Though th this would be like specifically uh, when you put something out of. Uh, the house really like the house uh, the plants temporary for summertime or people who do not pay uh, rent that would be easily how we use it okay so maybe I'll give you I'll, I'll write it down here is like no my am so is like no my am is uh, a set expression to to kick out of the house is like no Is like no Maya. All right. Okay. Next uh, is next prefix is that I want to talk about is Nua. Nua licked. And Nua is one of the um, most, like I would say, most frequ frequently used prefixes. Uh, generally, uh, you would see uh, Nua a lot. It typically, um, we typically use it to um, talk about a completed action, although all prefixes really um, give a sense of completed action to complete it. And just simply licked is, it doesn't say that it's completed, but prefixes kind of give us the sense of um, action that is completed. Anyway, uh, the, the, um, example that I was thinking about was uh, if somebody says where should I put your keys and I could say uh, put them on the on the table nolets osgalda nolets osgalda so uh, this is interesting because you see here we have a prep uh, preposition uz. So uh, what I want to draw your attention to is that uz can also be a prefix and we can have uh, the, a word uzlikt. And we can also have this sentence uh, a little different just with this word uzlietz uzgald. So you can have nolietz uzgald or uzlietz uzgald. So what what does uz uz mean? Uz means on or onto. So you can say nolietz uzgald, which would mean put it on the table, or uzlietz uzgald, and that would also mean put it on the table. So that's that's just how Latvian works. All right. Uh, now uh, I have gone uh, through us, so I'm not going to come back to us. But I have uh, four more prefixes to go through. And um, okay, I'm erasing this. And uh, the next prefix is palik. Palik. So when you see the prefix pa, uh, generally with other words as well, pa uh, it typically signifies a short or brief action. It's just like a slight movement. It's not like 
uh, it doesn't have that feeling of something like completely changing or something. So, for instance, uh, when would we use the word palikt is if uh, there's something in the way and we say move it aside. Yeah, it's not like we take it somewhere and put it out of the house, but it's like palietz mala. That would be move it aside, uh, put it aside, palietz. Paliets mala, right? Uh, however, this word palikt also is used um, in the meaning of stay. Uh, yes, a stay. Like for instance, a stay with me would be paliets piemanis. Okay, I will erase this. Paliets. Manis. So stay with me. So palikt is uh, uh, to move aside, or uh, palietz palikt could also mean uh, to remain, to stay. All right. Okay. Next is uh, a little different. Next prefix would be par. Par, and uh, the preposition par typically uh, means to to cross over, to to do something over, right? So um, the example that I was thinking about was like, for instance, uh, and this was given um, to me or asked uh, by one of my students. She she said, uh, "Can I use it like for if a cat is uh, given over a windowsill to somebody?" Because she had that situation actually. So she so yeah, parli it's kati pari paluodze. So when again when we have a sentence, we would have the prefix par, but then again we. Within that sentence, we would still have a preposition pari. So, parli it's pari uh, would be put it across something. Parli it pari. Okay. Uh, the word parlikt also uh, again has this literal meaning, but it can also mean to reschedule. So uh, we can, if we wanted to say, let's reschedule uh, a meeting for another date, then I would say parliksim um, citu datumu. Let's reschedule for another day. So it would be parliksim. Uz citu datumu. Parliksim uz citu datumu. Okay. And uh, what else do we have? Two more. Um, okay. Uh, well, you can watch it again if you are interested. I'm, I'm erasing this. So. Pialikt. Pialikt. So pialikt uh, means to to add or yeah to attach. The example that I gave to my students was, uh, for instance, um, if. Um, and and we were talking about a man. I was talking. To, uh, my my client was a man, and he and I said, if your wife uh, has uh, been out shopping, let's say, and she has bought a mirror, and uh, she's come, uh, she has uh, come back. Somebody has helped her to put that mirror in, let's say, trunk of a car. She's come back. And uh, you are going uh, out and greet her, uh, and uh, she has that heavy mirror in in the trunk. So, and uh, you would you would ask her, what would you like me to do with that mirror? And she would say, "Pilots um, uh, pcns, pilots pcns." P 
peer it's peer sienas. So peer, if you literally translate it from Latin into English, it would be at or by or next to or beside. Right. So the, uh, the man uh, might misinterpret this and bring the mirror inside and uh, put it on the floor so that it leans against uh, uh, the wall or next to the is leaning yeah, against the wall. Uh, however, uh, in Latvian, we use it differently. Pielets, piesienas would actually mean hang it on the wall. So that's a difference in how the way, how we think. Latvians and English think differently. Piesienas actually means on the wall. When when somebody in, in Latvian says pielets, piesienas, it's on the wall. Okay, that's interesting. All right, then the next is um, salikt. Salikt. And uh, salikt uh, usually means to um, uh, put it on in order, like construct something or organize well. So, so for instance, uh, um, a mother can uh, tell uh, her children, salietsiet manta svieta, salietsiet manta svieta. And what that means is she is telling uh, her children to put their toys in their pla uh, in the places designated for each toy. She wants the children to organize their room, to, to tidy up. Or salikt dinosaur no Lego klutsishiem, to put together dinosaur uh, uh, from Lego blocks, something like that, to, to organize something or to construct something. All right, and uh, yeah, that's that's that. I could talk more about this because now uh, next thing to talk about would be the conjugations, like how how this word changes uh, depending on what person uh, we are uh, using, like either he, she, it, which uh, we don't have it in Latin, but uh, viņš, viņa, viņi, viņas, uh, then the the word would change also uh, for each person it would change in the past form and in the future form but i think that would be a discussion for another time or what i would really like you uh, to to know is that we have um, now latin for english speakers club latin for english speakers or uh, as abbreviated it is called l4es and we have a, an l4es club and uh, what that means is that people who are in this club, they receive uh, issues like uh, two issues a month. And in the in those issues, there are all kinds of uh, exercises where I explain things really in detail. You can go through those exercises. I have rec uh, recorded my voice. My colleague Irina also records videos and voices. We uh, also prepare uh, this issue uh, so that um, it's themed. Like for instance, uh, the la last issue that we issued yesterday is uh, the theme is food and uh, traditions, Latvian metany tradition, we are talking about that and we have um, collected uh, Latvian uh, um, songs uh, about metany traditions. We are giving also culture uh, news in English so, and uh, there, there are exercises for reading, for expanding vocabulary, for uh, pronunciation, um, there is, um, and exercises are multi-level, so that, for instance, I, I really like the exercise that I created, which was a poem that I read, and poems are really good for beginner learners because they rhyme, and it's easier to, uh, to work on the pronunciation and memorization when words rhyme. I'm... Uh, reading it uh, in a very clear pronunciation. But then also the advanced level is uh, um, 
answering questions and it is not that easy to answer the questions about a poem what actually the meaning is because a poem is um, poems not all poems but uh, I pick poems where um, you really need to think about what the author was trying to say so it's uh, it's about a language it's also about the customs there are some food words in that poem so generally all this issue that we um, um, launched yesterday it's issue number four is uh, about food and uh, cooking and uh, yeah uh, traditions like that so um, yeah if you would like to know more about how to um, how to become the club member you can uh, send us an email or you can uh, you can comment down here but if you want to communicate with me uh, the email my email is you'll see at ilzb.com so this is my email yeah um that's that and uh yeah uh, i think uh that's enough for today uh have a good weekend and i'll hope to see you soon again bye bye